Hello, good day viewers. In our previous lesson, you have seen how to solve quadratic equations graphically, in which the point at which the parabola touches the x-axis determines the solution for such quadratic equation. So in today's tutorial, we are going to look onto the nature of solutions for quadratic equations. Um, the general form of any quadratic equation is given as ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And if you could remember, the formula used in solving uh, such an equation is x equals minus b plus or minus into square root of b squared minus four ac all divided by two a. So the terms under this square root is very, very important because we use them to determine the different form of solutions for quadratic equations. So suppose d equals to this terms under the square root, which is b squared minus 4ac. So this equation is used to determine the three basic solutions we have for quadratic equations. The first one, when d equals zero, if you substitute these values for any quadratic equation, you simplify and realize the solution is equal to zero. We say that quadratic equation has real and equal roots. Meaning that quadratic equation has two solutions, but the solutions are exactly the same. So first we have a graph in this form and the curve touches the x-axis at one point whether this side or the other side at exactly one point or an up and down parabola that touches the x-axis at one point we see that quadratic equation has a real and equal roots Number two, if d is greater than zero, if you substitute the values for that quadratic equation, for v squared minus four ac, and you realize the value you obtain is greater than zero, we say that quadratic equation has real and distinct roots. Uh, suppose we have a graph of a quadratic equation in this form and the parabola or the curve touches the x-axis at exactly two points whether open up or open down in this form we say these two points are the real solution for this quadratic equation and since there are two different solutions we say the roots are real and distinct and the last one number three if d is less than zero. This means that after simplifying this, you realize the value you obtain is negative. We say the solution is imaginary. Imaginary solution. Or complex solution. Or complex solution. Example, suppose you have a graph in this form where the parabola takes a turn without touching the x-axis in this form, in this form anywhere, anywhere without touching the x-axis, we say that that quadratic equation has an imaginary root and this is that. So let us give an example for each one of this. Suppose we have this quadratic equation and we want to testify the form of solution in this quadratic equation. All we have to do is to substitute in this formula, which is d equal to b squared minus 4ac. And you know that b is the coefficient of the middle term, which is 2. So d is now equal to coefficient of the middle term 2. We have squared minus 4 
times a, and a is the leading coefficient, which is the coefficient of x squared, which is one for this. Then c, c is the constant which we have here as one. This is equal to four minus four times one times one is four, and this is equal to zero. D is now equal to zero. Hence, we say this quadratic equation has real and equal roots. This quadratic equation has real and equal root. And another thing, if D is equal to zero, we say that that quadratic equation is a perfect square quadratic equation. There's another point you can obtain there. Let's look on to the next one. Here is another quadratic equation which we want to testify the form of solution it has. Again, we say D is equal to B squared and B is negative five. So we have negative five squared minus four multiplied by A and A is the leading coefficient which is two here. Multiply by C and C is the last term which is constant three. Negative five squared is 25 minus four times two is eight and eight times three is 24. So we have 24 and 24 minus 21 is equal to one. And, uh, and one is greater than zero. Hence we say this quadratic equation has real and distinct roots. Now let us look on to the last one. Now here is the last form, which we want to see the form of solution in this quadratic equation. Already we have our D to be equal to B squared minus four AC. B is the coefficient of the middle term, which is negative four. We have negative four squared because B is in a squared minus four multiplied by a, which is the leading coefficient two, multiplied by c, which is the constant three. Negative four squared is 16 minus four times two, eight times three is 24. This is equal to negative eight. D is equal to negative eight, which is less than zero. Hence, we say this quadratic equation has an imaginary solution. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you for watching. Do share to your learning colleagues and don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more exciting videos.